Hey guys, I want to show you how to bass fish for salmon. And bear with me, if you watch what I'm doing and you're into bass fishing or you're into salmon fishing, you'll see what I'm talking about. One of the things I just threw on because the twitching bite started to slow down was this spinner, the MEP spinner. Um, and it really, uh, what's funny, even though it's different than a bass spinner bait, which has that kind of the wire with the blade on one side and the body on the other, when you're fishing them for coho, I actually fish them kind of like I fish a spinner bait, like you would for bass, like chuck it out there. And instead of just a straight retrieve, which does work, but giving it little jerks, like kind of like you would with a, with a swim bait or a spinner bait or something, you got the hoochie spinner, giving it a little like, little jerk, little movement, change directions, crank fast, stop, let it move slow. Chip, chip, chip. Oh. What do they want? Now, sometimes it is just the super fast retrieve and stop. Um, crank it back out there. Here's another power fishing technique for coho. That's just a ton of fun. So if you're, uh, if you're into bass fishing, salmon fishing, coho in particular can be a blast and you can do that. Um, it's not only an Alaska thing, Washington and Oregon have some incredible coho fisheries. This year is good for coho. These are the good old days. Maybe tough for steel. Oh, fish, there he is. Yes, and like that one, bringing it in, giving it a little yoink. Oh, nice. There we go. Bass fishing for salmon. Woo! Stay up, stay oh, up. that's a nice one. Stay up in the front so I can okay, get it. Okay, that's a good one. Beauty. Oh, yeah. That's the cup. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that is pretty. Wow. Oh, wow. Keep Whoa. that. Easy. <laughs> He's going. Okay. Wow, that's a nice fish. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's a cool fish. You know, something special about the way those grab. That was such a nice take. Giving it little yoinkity yoinks. Um, seeing what happened, we've got a gorgeous, gorgeous, what I would, oh, wow, this thing is beautiful. Alrighty, it's twitching time in the great Northwest out on the Oregon coast with my buddy Tim Riley, who's already shortly been putting on a clinic for twitching. And one thing that's interesting that I am learning and I'm learning something every season about twitching and coho and all that, but Tim has been going with a lot kind of softer twitch rhythm than I would personally be used to. So he's uh, casting out into target water. And whereas I would typically go with like a fairly big twitch you know, you got a jumper down there. Of, of, I'd, I'd run with like a fairly bigger twitch most of the time. In this Tidewater, what he's doing is more of like a, a little lift. He's still letting it drop. Maybe a little lift and lift. And uh, so I saw him quickly clean up on uh, three right before we even started filming this. So if I can't get one, I'm fishing the same jig as Tim. I don't even want to know what that means. <laughs> so... In this case, since I'm behind the boat, if you'll notice I'm not even reeling. I think it's probably 10, 12 feet. These fish are weird. And the whole thing with twitching and coho in general, I don't think this is a case with steelhead and it's not always the case with Chinook, but with coho, erratic things will work. Um, there's 
fish kind of all over these these bars. I think it's uh, there's some gravel. They're rolling along the side. We're seeing jumpers. One thing is, I just ripped it in like really fast, and then I just stop it because a coho could have been following it that whole time. And then now that it stops, they might think it's time to chomp. Do the same thing. Rip it in. Polarize. I got these the nines polarized glasses that we got. Um, and uh, with those, I always keep an eye on my jig as it's coming up close because sometimes you'll see those fish chase it to the boat. And if you do, crank it right back where you were and they almost always will bite. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to slow down my twitch a little bit. Hope for the best. Um, this rod is cool. The Infinity, a Lama Glass Infinity Twitch Rod. It's seven foot nine. It's a one piece. Um, very sensitive graphite rod. That's perfect for the twitching technique. You know, you can fish it all day and it won't wear you out. It's nicely balanced. Another thing about it is this is not just a twitching rod. It'll chuck a, a spinner like the MEPS Flying C or throw a spoon. It'll, um, it, it's awesome actually for throwing crankbaits. Uh, throwing plugs for coho is so effective that it's nice to have a rod that can do that as well as twitch, as well as throw spinners. And with that in mind, this thing, there's also an excellent largemouth bass Sanko rod. I've done just about everything with it. I've caught steelhead on it, I've caught Chinook on it, and it has performed flawlessly. So, just saw a jumper over there. We got a kayaker. Hopefully he's gonna push him over right near us. And let's see if we can get that coho. Come on, where you at, buddy? I saw ya. Going a little too fast on my twitches? Do you yeah, want slower? Slower down. Want to swing it like a fly with a little twitch? How do you want it? How do you need it? What are you gonna? Oh, 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 oh. That's what you wanted. That was it. That was right. it. That's what he wanted. He wanted a little slow lyric. Yep. How do you want it? How do you feel? Growing up as a fisherman, trying to twitch. Come on, something like that. Oh boy. All right, well, I'm going to get it back out there. Crankety crank. Boink, boink, boink. Anybody home? Nope. Nobody home. But there was someone home right over there, so I'm just going to chuck it. It's traveling. I'm not doing the big old twitches like I normally would, and you know? It just goes to show every river and every situation is different. And twitching and coho. You can have so much variety. There he is. There he is. Nice. Oh, shoot. Come on. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Did that not look like a fish? It did. That looked like it a fish. It did. I backed up to get more of the rod action in. Yeah, it fooled all of us. <laughs> that was wow. Okay. We're not even going to talk about what was just on my line. Yeah. So. I wonder if that's what I hooked the first time. You know? Let's cut a I hooked a, a straw, a, uh, a stick. Wow. Well, them coho, one of the things about it is, is in the Oregon coast, you'll hook them and on the way, they'll actually turn into a stick. Yeah. Or a rock. That, I've had that several times. Yeah, so. Uh, part of their evolutionary process that kind of allows them to maintain. stealth spawning colors. Yeah, for sure. So, um, fish might have chased it. Sweet to put one right here. Some folks going by trolling for these coho. A lot of different ways you can go for them. It's kind of cool to do uh, bass tactics in tidewater. In, uh, tidewater. Trolling is super effective. There's no doubt but if you're the type of person like me who's a little bit of ADD about uh, fishing it's really nice to be able to cast all day for salmon um, although yeah it can be a little tougher on the arms for sure <laughs> um, but boy is it fun when you actually do get a bite and uh, so like I said I'm trying to learn the rhythm see what the fish want I'm using the same jig as Tim is using and I'd like to blame the fish, but I'll tell you what, he uh, really put the wood to him here when we started. So, 
we got a big old fish jumping right behind the boat trolling, but they ain't biting that trolling gear either. We're gonna try the other side of the boat. Reel it up fast, drop it. Straight ahead to the jumper. This is a power fishing technique. So in bass, a lot of times in tournaments, when guys are going and they're trying to find a school of fish, they're gonna power fish. They're not fishing slow techniques. They're trying to cover a ton of water and find that first aggressive fish. And then after they find them, they might move up and fish slower, you know, plastics and stuff. That is just a slower technique. I would take twitching as a similar approach. I'm looking for aggressive fish for biters and I'm covering a lot of, a lot of water fast. While I'm in the zone, I'm gonna vary up my twitching. I'm gonna go slow, I'm gonna go fast. But once I'm done, I'm gonna crank as fast as I can and get it out to the next place. Around here, fish could be on either side of me. What happened, Tim? He's, uh, he ate it twice, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and now he's the other end of the boat. There we go. He's a hot one. Wow. He ate it once, missed it, I paused it, and he ate it again. <laughs> Look at the size of that one. That's beauty. That's a beefy one. It's probably gonna go nuts one more time, folks. Yep, told you. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. When you're bass fishing for coho, obviously there's some subtleties and some changes in colors. Obviously they like some of these goofy stuff with hoochie spinners and all that. But some of the concepts are the same. The erratic action, the fact that with a jig, you can be popping it. Sometimes it's slow, sometimes it's fast, sometimes downstream, upstream, whatever it may be. And then with the spinners, fishing them like a spinner bait, like you would if you go watch some Kevin Van Dam tutorials on YouTube or something like that. Just watch what he does with a spinner bait and then try that with a, with a, with a spinner for coho. It's kind of fun. Also, one thing I didn't fish today, um, but if you can cast wiggle warts, mag lifts, plugs, all that sort of stuff, that is one other way for a bass fisherman who's really familiar with crankbait fishing, very similar. Fish it slow, fish it fast, get it to dive down really quick and then start to come back slow and then real fast. All about erratic. With steelhead, it's a whole different matter. With spinners and spoons, I'm really delicate, trying to glide it right into their face. Coho are a whole different beast and they'll take chase just like an aggressive smallmouth bass would. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. For those of you that already subscribed to the magazine and get it into your mailbox, you guys have been supporting us since 1967. We appreciate it so much. If you're not, one thing you can do to help us out is just comment. Please do that.